Hi everybody, this is Eric and you're watching Eric Plays 8-String and in today's video we're going to be doing a Q&A about stacked fifths and Kenny Barron chord voicings. Hope you enjoy it. So I got a really nice message from Flavio Esteban and he writes, Hey Eric, how would you approach playing Kenny Barron voicings on the 8-String? And for those of you who aren't familiar with Kenny Barron, he's an incredible jazz piano player, um, really amazing human being, really amazing musician. I've gotten to meet him a couple of times and hear him play quite a bit live. And it's just, he's a master at moving around these big, beautiful chord voicings. And he does a lot of stuff with parallel motion. And one of the things that he's most famous for is what everyone now calls the Kenny Barron chord voicing. And what it is is a series of stacked fifths, and then a half step, and then another series of stacked fifths. So, for example, um, talking about the key of C minor, so the first set of fifths would be C, G, and D. And that gives us the root, the fifth, and then for the minor version of this chord, we would play E flat, B flat, and F. So it's the minor third, the seventh, and the eleventh. So all together we get this. So root, fifth, ninth, minor third, dominant seventh, eleventh. Beautiful sounding chord. Now this chord has six notes in it, and we only have five fingers on our right hand, so this can be a little bit challenging to play as a cluster. What I like to do is sweep with my pick and then use my either my ring finger or my middle finger to play the note on the B string. So in terms of fingering, it looks like this. My middle finger is playing two notes at the same time, so it's playing the first two notes, and then my pinky is playing the third note, so it would be eighth fret, eighth fret, tenth fret for the first set, and then my index finger is barring across the rest of the strings at the sixth fret in order to get the next set of notes. And then in between, my ring finger <laughs> is playing at the eighth fret, uh, and that's going to be on the D string. So we get middle finger, middle finger, pinky, index finger on the bar, ring finger, skip a string, and then on the B string, first finger again. So we get this guy. So that's a lot of fun. The major version is really nice because it's almost the same shape and it's actually a little bit easier. So here's our shape again. And we just take our index finger, there it is, and our ring finger and move them both up by a half step. And this is actually a much easier voice to play because it's not quite as stretchy. So you get, instead you get this. There it is. So this time you have the root, the fifth, the ninth, that's still the same, we're playing the same notes there. Then we have the major third, the E natural, the B natural, and then we have the sharp four, the sharp eleven, the F sharp on top on our B string. So that gives us a really beautiful, really major seven, kind of a Lydian sound. Really gorgeous. So we can do those same voicings on our B string on the root and we get something like this. And the way that this chord breaks down, it's the exact same voicing, uh, but because we're over a string group, our fingering is a little bit different. So this time we have the 8th fret, 10th fret, 12th fret, and we're barring across with the index finger, and then the 8th fret on the D string, 10th fret on G, and 8th fret on the E string. So you have to keep your index finger pretty far behind the fret because there's a tendency for the finger to want to curve in, at least for me, to come in and cross over and sit on top of the fret. And it'll make that E, the note on the E string, which is a C, by the way, it'll make it sound a little bit clunky. So again, as far as stretching goes, you want to be careful, go nice and slowly. Play one note at a time in the arpeggio. every note is coming out cleanly, if you get something like it means that our fingers aren't quite balanced on 
the fingerboard, the fretboard. And it's not so much a matter of pressing harder with all your hands. A lot of people will think that they need to squeeze really tightly to get chords like these to come out. And it's actually the opposite. It's more about balance and it's about distributing weight evenly between all of the fingers that are playing that chord. So going back to this again, there it is. So I noticed that note was a little clunky. So all I did was pivoted from my wrist and brought in my elbow a little bit to bring more weight onto the fingers that were kind of clamming a little bit. So be patient, give yourself a lot of time. Uh, remember the first time that you learned how to play a bar chord, you know, way back when, when this F major bar chord was like a huge deal in your early days of playing guitar. I'm pretty sure that's the case for most of us when we started out. Getting a clean bar is one of the toughest things to do as a beginner. So these chord grips, even though they're a little bit complicated and there's you know a little bit going on, they're not impossible, they're playable. And if you spend some time practicing them, you know, give it a couple of months, just play them a little bit every day as part of your practice regimen. Uh, you'll find that these chords will fall under your fingers and you'll be able to just grab them with not a lot of effort. So keep going. So the other thing I should talk about is the major version of this minor 11th chord rooted on the B string. So here's our minor. Now, this is not quite as simple as the low E string rooted version because the way that the guitar is tuned, uh, it's kind of tough. I'm not going to say it's impossible, but I can't play it as an arpeggio. And the reason for that is that we have to move the top set of fifths up by a half step, but the index finger still needs to play a half step back, one fret back on the B string. So this can't really move. So you get this set of fifths, but then the index finger needs to change frets, go up by one fret to play the rest of the notes. So what I would do is I'd play it more as an arpeggio and kind of cheat that first note, play it as long as I can, and then when I get to about the third note, finger over. So if I were to do it quickly, and it's not the prettiest thing in the world. There it goes. That's a cleaner one. And of course, if you're playing with a bass player or a keyboard player, you can have them hit that root note, and you can just play the rest of the notes in the chord, which is a lot easier. Still really beautiful sounding. Um, one thing you can try is like the Van Epps fifth finger, where you use the the flatter bottom portion of your oh, there it is of your index finger to play a bar over here at the ninth fret and then you can reach back and see if you can get that to come out cleanly. I can't get it clean and I think that has to do with the way that my finger is shaped. Um, we're all different. See I'm not quite able to make it happen yet. I may be able to. I'm going to keep practicing and see if I can make it happen but uh, depending on the shape of your hands and the shape and length of your index finger you may be able to do it. So give it a try but we'll see how it goes. If I figure it out I'll post a little video update and let you guys know how I got it. So speaking of Kenny Barron, the other voicing that I wanted to share just a little bit was this uh, kind of a 13 slash flat 9 voicing that he uses a lot to do descending chords uh, doing like two fives and things like that. So um, let's talk about the first fingering. So we've got a tritone and then a fourth on top. So for example, we're at the ninth fret, 10th fret, and 11th fret. So what we can do on our B is go down to a, an F at the eighth fret and we get this. And that is like an F7 sharp nine. And then the next move is to take these three notes, slide them down, and then move this bass note over to the E string, and we get a really, really nice C13 chord. So we get F altered, sharp nine, to C13. So what we can do is do these nice little sequences, just going descending two fives. sharp here so let's make it a B 6-9 to resolve it. You can also do what we call a tritone sub and that's basically just a chromatic moving bass line so you can go and that's a lot of fun too. Any pattern you want you can go chromatically you can go by step you can go by skip 
Um, but enjoy it. Have fun with it. So I think that just about covers it. If anyone has any questions, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and please hit that like button. And if you'd like to be notified when I post new videos, hit the subscribe button. Thank you all for watching so much, and thank you for the great comments. It's really great going through this with everybody and going on this journey and discovering this really fascinating and amazing instrument that we have in the eight-string guitar. All right, I'll see you next week. Thanks a lot. Bye.